Welcome to Learn from the Experts, presented by the Women Business Owners Alliance of the Pioneer Valley. The WBOA is made up of women entrepreneurs. The businesswomen that you will see on this program are members of WBOA and are excited to share their expertise and knowledge with our viewers. So sit back, relax, while they wow you with their expertise. My name is Freda Brown from Divorce Financial Services, and my co-host is... Hi, Freda. Nice to see you today. I'm Mary Jo Cranmore, and I'm from Client Cycle Marketing. And our guest today is Tracy Goodman from Weber and Grinnell. Tracy, tell us a little bit about what you do and what we're here to talk about today. Thank you, ladies. I work for Weber and Grinnell Insurance Agency here in Northampton, and I am a personal insurance specialist. So I am pretty much a rarity in, in the insurance industry because I specialize in personal lines, but I seek customers um, in the field who may not necessarily come to our agency on their own. We get a lot of walk-ins and phone calls, and we service some local organizations, but I, I get involved with other business, business owners and individuals so that I can help them on their personal or business insurance. So for individual, I know one thing I've come in contact with is an umbrella policy in my life. So can you share a little bit more about what that is? Absolutely. I love talking about umbrella policies because it's something that most people don't know a lot about and it is a fantastic policy that provides individuals with additional liability coverage. On all of our auto and homeowners, we have underlying limits for liability. And the umbrella policy is another layer that comes on top of the underlying limits to protect you and your family. Can you give us an example of, of exactly why you would use an umbrella policy and, and and what for? Absolutely. So one example is uh, for those of you who may have a pet, for example, if you have a dog and all of a sudden your dog is outside and your dog bites a neighbor's child, okay, and they decide to sue you. Yes, you have a great relationship with your neighbor, but let's face it, when it comes to a child or any someone getting injured, you know, all of a sudden you need to protect yourself. So they're suing you and you have a homeowner's policy that may have a liability limit of 500,000, but now you need more money, okay? They're gonna come after you for your assets and gar they can garnish future wages. So you need to protect yourself. So I, I had an occasion to have an umbrella policy. I had some people coming into my house mm -hmm. frequently. I run my yep. own business. And I was concerned that what happens if someone slips and falls in the front step exactly. on the way in? Is that an example? Absolutely. It, it's, it's anyone. I mean, we all have a situation where liability, you know, can affect us. So having another layer to protect yourself, take an auto, okay, car accidents. The majority of umbrella policies are paid out on the auto, more so than a home, because car accidents happen all the time. What if, God forbid, you're driving and you kill a pedestrian or a very bad car accident and something happens and that family sues you, okay? You know, you need to make sure you're covering yourself financially. So what's the limit? It, it, you know, I, I started an umbrella policy and it was a million dollar mm -hmm. coverage. What, what is the, give me the parameters. So an uh, umbrella policy can go up to $5 million. Um, we tend to write a lot for a million or two million. The best way to really determine um, what you should have for coverage is really look at your whole you know, financial picture. What are your assets? You want to think about everything that you own or what somebody can really come after you with. We even have a worksheet that we tend to, you know, provide our customers with or we can speak with their accountant or, you know, we don't like to make that decision. It's really a decision the insured should make um, because we're not the lawyer, we're not the accountant. We want to educate you to make sure you understand why you need the coverage and then make sure you have it. So we'll work with our companies. And the best thing about it is it's very inexpensive. Believe it or not, a million dollar umbrella policy can start at $160 a year. Wow, so that's nothing. It's right. nothing when you think about we all go out to dinner and we can spend that, <laughs> you know? So it's a nice, it's, the, the coverage allows you to sleep better at night. It's kind of how we like to educate people on it. 
what are some indicators that I really need to get one if I haven't, if I'm, you know, uh, started my own business or I've sort of moved down a road mm -hmm. and I have my I have my own home and I have a lot of things that's the indicator what is the indicator of getting an well it really depends I mean you mentioned business but that actually is really looked at as a separate entity because you can have a business umbrella policy too I mean if you have your own business and you have a business in your home there are different endorsements that we want to make sure are on your homeowners insurance especially if you have people coming to your house and exchanging money that tends to be the key piece there in how we decipher whether it's just a straight homeowners or whether there's additional factors we want to come into play. There are many times I've had clients come in and we start out just talking about a homeowner's policy and an umbrella and then they end up realizing they need a general liability or a business owner's policy on the commercial side. So really when it comes down to personal insurance, an indicator is you know, it, it, it can be very broad. I mean, if you drive a car, you own a house. I mean, I have individuals I get umbrellas for who rent a property but have a vehicle. I mean, anyone has exposure. We all are in a position where somebody can hold us liable. So, so can you give us some examples of um, peop some people that have had exposure um, somebody sued them for a reason. What are the reasons why you, you gave a dog bite by a dog, yep. by the car accident? What are some other off the wall things that might okay. be out there? Swimming pool. <laughs> right. Need I say more? Right. Okay, right. God forbid you're on vacation, child gets into a swimming pool. Not good. So, absolutely, if you have a swimming pool, <laughs> definitely have an umbrella. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it really, it, it, there's so many different, um, you know, you have the automobile accidents, you have, you know, dogs, you have swimming pools, you have, you know, you're having a party, okay, and somebody slips and falls. Or you think your teenage child is not having a party, and they have a party, and then something bad happens. Child leaves, someone's hit by a car, there's a death, there's a major injury, injury. What about a trampoline? Oh, we love trampolines. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was sarcastic. <laughs> so trampolines are definitely, um, no matter whether you have a trampoline or not, having an umbrella policy is, an, is a, a very good idea. Trampolines are very difficult to insure. In, we have a few insurance companies that will accept them as long as you have a net around the trampoline. Um, but you can have an umbrella policy even if you have a trampoline. We just, as your agent, need to know as much information as we can about your recreational items, such as watercrafts, motorcycles, snowmobiles. So I've had individuals who get a policy and then they forget to tell me that they have other assets or other, you know, watercrafts, recreational vehicles, and we need to, excuse me, we need to make sure that everything is accounted for. What if your neighbor has a trampoline and it is on your prop right next to your property line? Okay, so <laughs> again, insurance e it, yeah, insurance equals it depends. So it's very hard to give an exact answer because at the end of the day we don't know all the scenarios. Like what does the property line say? You know, where was the trampoline mm -hmm. when they investigate? Where was the trampoline sitting? Is it on a piece of your property or is it really just on your neighbor's property. You know, who is liable there? And what was the incident that occurred? You know, did someone truly have a, uh, you know, a life-threatening, you know, um, uh, situation or? So my concern is that it's so close to my property that when I have friends over and they have kids, they want to go on that trampoline. I say, no, that's not no. my trampoline. You exactly. can't go on it. Mm -hmm. But I don't always have my eyes on them to know exactly. that, that they're not going on that trampoline. Exactly. So I think, Freda, you know, it really comes down to it's an it depends situation. It's very hard to give an exact answer because we don't have all the facts. You know, I think when if an accident happened, say the child fell off, broke their back, well, God forbid, but it's it's whose line really is that trampoline on? And that's not something as the insurance agent, we necessarily can determine that. You know, there's gonna be an investigation. The insurance company, so say the parents of this child who got injured decide they're gonna sue you, when really that wasn't even your property. Mm -hmm. So it just comes down to there's a bit more that's gonna have to get into that to really firmly answer that question. But if it was on your property and there was a problem, yes, you are liable.
Okay. So <laughs> speaking of more, there's more to talk about the jewelry scheduling that we had discussed a little bit before we even started talking today. Tell me what that means. Um, tell me what jewelry scheduling is. Okay. So on your homeowner's policy, you have stuff property coverage. You want to make sure that not only do you have liability, like we discussed, you know, for additional liability on the umbrella, that you are covering your things. And jewelry is, is a big item that people have and have a concern about. On a basic homeowner's policy, you are only getting about $1,000 on if, God forbid, something happens to that jewelry. So what we highly recommend is that you schedule your important valuables, meaning that you have them appraised and you provide us with a value of, say, that diamond necklace that you're wearing that would um, allow the insurance company to replace it for you. Okay, They are not mm -hmm. necessarily going to just give you a check for the $30,000 that maybe it's valued at. They are going to replace it for you. So if I'm going to an appraiser, do mm -hmm. they have to approve the appraiser? I mean, who, where does this no. come Usually, from? Usually, um, you know, an appraiser, an appraisal is an appraisal because obviously any appraiser, you know, has the right um, uh, designations certifications. or certifications, mm -hmm. thank you, for mm -hmm. making sure that and they can. they have can. to sign off on Oh that. yeah, they sign yeah. up for it. Their name is on it right. at the end of the day, <laughs> so they are not going to do something that right. they shouldn't, so, so you hope. Right. And so what we do is we take those items and we add them to your insurance policy. Now, some insurance carriers, actually most of our insurance carriers, we have what we call an additional endorsement that somebody can add. So we might give you some other bells and whistles that'll increase that thousand dollars to say five thousand dollars but I know for myself personally my engagement ring you know is very important to me and if God forbid it falls down the you know garbage disposal mm -hmm. or down the sewer one day or mm -hmm. it's stolen I want to make sure that I get insurance money to replace it so it, co it would cover um, loss and damage as opposed to just f having a theft yes yes exactly so you want to definitely keep that in mind that you know you want to think about the two questions I tell people when they are deciding whether to schedule items or not is do you want insurance money to replace this item and how much does this item mean to you I mean I have this bracelet and I love this bracelet but if I lose this am I really gonna go put in a claim which could hurt me at renewal time for something that I might just decide to go purchase again whether it be this bracelet or another bracelet. And so for me, I made the decision not to schedule this bracelet. Mm -hmm. I've decided that I don't want the insurance money to replace it because it's going to damage or it's going to affect me at renewal time. Mm -hmm. So if that bracelet got stolen though and you didn't have it scheduled, out of would, luck. It would it wouldn't be covered under your thousand dollars? It is. Yes. Just up to the thousand dollars. So if I had mm -hmm. five thousand dollars worth of jewelry stolen and nothing was scheduled, I'm only getting up to a thousand dollars. Well, I'll tell you, my mother, uh, from a product of the depression, hid a lot of stuff around the <laughs> house, and we found things. After I hear she that passed often. Away. Right, right, and it may not be happening into the future, but it certainly happened with my parents. Um, what if if they hadn't scheduled any of this stuff and the house burned down? It is not covered. Correct. Correct. I mean, it, again. Things depend also because you have, if the whole house is gone, mm -hmm. you know, you have coverage for your stuff under your personal property and how mm -hmm. you want to list that for an insurance agent. But if it's not scheduled, there's no value Oof. they can assign to it. So they're just going by your word and... Right. So it depends. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it, but it, it's very hard sometimes to give people very specific answers when it comes to some of the things when it comes to insurance. And it's not for lack of your agent wanting to be concrete with you, but it, it can be difficult. And people because every situation is different, right? And people sometimes can place value on items that, that doesn't really have. That's why an appraiser is so important, right? Because exactly. Because the, the sentimental value, my mother's wedding ring, exactly, is far outpaced by anything some appraiser would tell me. Correct. Yes. And that's a, a, a piece we tell people as well is that if you know you want money to replace it again, they can't give you that ring back from your mm -hmm. mother. But if you want the money so you can get something similar because that matters to you. So mm -hmm. it, it, 
it depends on the individual. I mean, that's why a lot of people don't end up scheduling because they say if it's gone, it's gone. The ring <laughs> mattered to me because it was given to me by my, mm -hmm. my deceased mother. It's not because I want this diamond ring. So it just, it just really is a personal preference. And it also one thing I do want to add is fine arts and antiques. That is something that you want to think about as well. I have many insureds who tell me they have beautiful rugs and antiques and heirlooms and, and they've done nothing with it. And it can be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I say, you know, you really want to think about that because if the house burns down and we have not scheduled this and put value to it, you're not getting money for that. And how much does that add to your insurance policy? You said the, the, um, the umbrellas were only a couple hundred yeah. dollars. What's the difference for your scheduling your jewelry? I have to say, you know, I used to think it was so expensive. And the more I've, I've looked at it, you know, it can maybe say, you know, $200 a year or $300 a year. It really depends how much you want to cover. I mean, I have some people where it could be $2,000 because they want to put everything on there. Another key piece to think about is some insurance companies offer blanket insurance coverage. And that is a really nice way. So if you have a lot of similar like items, a lot of bracelets, a lot of jewelry that, you know, cost around the same and it's not really big, large pieces, they will give you a blanket coverage. So we might say, we'll add on to your policy $10,000 of blanket coverage. So that's going to be another $200 a year. But now you don't have to schedule. You don't have to get every item appraised. You're able just to say, I have the jewelry coverage and that's it. So that's Excellent. a nice, that's a really nice feature too. Not every company offers it. We have several that we work with who do, and then we have several who don't. So it really is a matter of your agent figuring out the best fit for you. Right, and that's part of the services you offer people. Yes. They can come in and, oh, and yep. you can go through their things and say, okay, this is what I would recommend. Yes, like right now I'm working with someone who had every single thing they own scheduled. And I was like, okay, this is a little crazy. Like, will you put in a claim for the $50 ring or mm -hmm. the you know, $120 mm -hmm. bracelet. I said, I want you to think the big picture. So instead, we took a lot of those items and we added a $5,000 blanket coverage, took that stuff off of scheduled, took the bigger items, anything over five grand, and scheduled that, and it brought the premium down, and it cleaned it up. So mm -hmm. sometimes it saves you money, but other times it's just getting it properly covered. Great. Is there anything you'd like to add? Is there anything we haven't really touched upon this, this afternoon? Um, I think on those two topics, I think so far I'm good. I mean, I, I could sit here forever because there's so many different scenarios. And then I'd have to actually get out, you know, the insurance manual so we can talk about everything. But, <laughs> no, but, manuals, no manuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the best thing is, you know, talk to your agent and always, you know, don't get complacent. Look at your stuff. Look at your policy and go from there. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Tracy Goodman My from pleasure. Weber Brunel. We so appreciated you coming and sharing this Thank uh, you for having with me. us. We appreciate it very much. And if you're looking for more information on WBOA or any of the guest experts we have, and we have a lot, uh, please go to WBOA.org and take a look. And until next time, thank you very much. Thanks, Breda. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.